Hello and welcome to the Productive Wellbeing Show. I am so excited for episode 36 to be joined by the amazing Janine Newbury. And today, hi Janine, thanks for joining Hello. us. Thank you. Now let me tell you a little bit more about Janine. Um, today we're going to be talking about nutrition and mental health. Um, because Janine is a woman's health, lifestyle and mindset coach um, and is more than qualified to be having this conversation with us. And um, prior to this, she was a model and um, still does modeling now and um, is also a mindset sort of coach as well. So today is gonna be a really, really interesting conversation. As you're joining us, let us know where you're joining from um if you've got any questions leave them in the comments if you're joining on replay say replay um and we will uh, get started in just one second when i get the live up on linkedin here we go amazing we are live on linkedin tech is our friend today so yeah and um give us some virtual high fives some likes let us know that you are with us because other <laughs> Janine and I are just going to be like, it's just us. So, Janine, <laughs> thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Welcome to my kitchen. Ta da! <laughs> We've got it's such a nice beautiful. corner. We've got nice lighting here. So, yeah. We've got such a beautiful kitchen. Oh, I see okay. that's where you do your. Um, your your creations your cooking your yes. excitement we've got bavaria in the house hi bavaria yeah. <laughs> right oh we've got leon c in the house hi leon c amazing hi. i love that you guys let us know where you're joining us from so that we can feel like a real global community here so today's conversation is all about nutrition and mental health. Um, it's something that I'm absolutely fascinated about and know kind of a little bit, but Janine is really an expert about this. So we're going to talk about three areas. And obviously this conversation could go on for a very long time, but just for the, the sake of today's session, we're just going to really focus in on three areas. The first area is Janine. Can what we <laughs> really affect how you feel um yes definitely um so you, there's that whole saying isn't it that you are what you eat if you eat live foods you'll feel alive um and you know yourself when you've eaten foods if you've eaten sort of good healthy food you feel good you feel energized um you feel good about yourself your body's in a better space your your flow your energy flow is better and when you eat um bad foods, fried foods, processed foods, too much alcohol, you drink too much alcohol, you feel rough the next day. Maybe not so much when you're in your early 20s, but as you get older, definitely. <laughs> so um, that's uh, that's sort of a little, you know, that's a good way of, sort of proof of what you put into your body, what you consume on a physical level does actually impact your physical body, but also your mental um, health as well. So it's it's like this, this is your body. It's a bit like having a if you've got a car and you put slightly putting sugar and rubbish and everything in a car, it would break down and not run so well. Or if you've got a petrol car and you put diesel in it, it's not going to run so well. And your body is the same. You need to put the essential things that it needs, much like a car needs petrol and oil and, and other components. Your body needs the same things. So you need, um, you know, you need to make sure that you have a balance of all these things so that all it's like little building blocks for your body so that everything in your body works. Your body works well, you've got energy. You know yourselves that when you've got more energy, you feel good, you feel you feel healthy, you feel happier. So it impacts your your mental and your physical. Um, and you know you can eat um, high energy foods to feel more high energy. And if you're feeling tired and sluggish, or you're getting bloated and things like that, you don't feel good about yourself. If you're tired, you're you're you can get brain fog, so you're not focused properly. It can lead to depression. Um, you can get like gut health problems and depression is all linked to that. And on also other, other health issues. So if you're not eating properly and taking care of your body, it starts to break down at a cellular level and you will get ill. And if you're ill, you're not happy. So it, it's all interlinked. This literally is your body and your, your place to live. No matter where you live in your life, this is the only real place you've got to live. So take care of it, like keep it clean, keep it healthy, keep it moving because you need to move your body as well. So there's like an exercise element to it as well. But 
what you're consuming um, physically and mentally impacts your body. And of course it would. It kind of makes common sense when you think about it like that. So This is so good to know because um, <laughs> let us know in the comments, guys, if this, um, if this kind of first question is helpful. Because for me, sometimes I would eat certain foods and then feel a certain way. And I'd be thinking in my head, was it the food or am I making this up? Am I kind of going crazy? And so now that you're sort of reconfirming that it is, certain foods so give us an example of what kind of foods would make us feel good so for me sweet potato is that a food that is yeah it's great sweet potato is great sweet potato is actually full of vitamin c we'll go on to vitamins and stuff when i talk a bit about immune stuff a bit later um but um yeah sweet potatoes are great they're lower on the glycemic index than white potatoes so you don't get that kind of you know the sugar hit and dip so they'll keep your energy sustained for longer and they've got more vitamins there's a rule of thumb with uh, veggies fruits and veg the more color the more nutrients so if you're coming to something like lettuce um a dark green leaf leafy lettuce like a spinach or a kale will have more nutrients than an iceberg lettuce so if you're choosing one or the other, like try and mix things up because you want different nutrients from different things. But as a rule of thumb, the more colour, the better it is for you and try and mix up your colours. So here's um, a really sort of crazy thing where I just started to experiment with this. So I, I started to eat what my body was craving. Yes, that's brilliant. And my body does not crave um sugar only at certain times of the cycle does my body really crave the sugar so my mm -hmm. body was craving and say tell me if these are good things because i'm really hoping they are my body was craving and craves every day spinach sweet potato tomatoes yeah. pine nuts yeah eggs yeah um i'm trying to think what else um apples yeah and basil okay. these are things that literally is just like my dream meal they are amazing things to crave. <laughs> oh, and, and chickpeas as well. Oh, chickpeas. Yeah, I had a craving for chickpeas the other week as well, actually. I, I made like a, a, a sort of a raw pasta dish with um, butternut spirals and I put some chickpeas in it as well because my body obviously wanted what was in that at that moment in time. But it's great that you're um, craving those things. Those foods that you're talking about there with the spinach and the um, and sweet potato and, and the tomato, you've got a great balance. You've got like zinc and things like that. Like zinc is great for your immune system and what's going on at the moment. I've started craving oranges, for example, as well, like the citrus fruits like my body's because I got, I actually got the uh, coronavirus, as you know, and um, so I started craving oranges and foods that supported my body to get over the virus. So you're craving that. So you, the more you eat healthy foods, the more your body starts to crave the healthier foods. It's mm. almost like you train it to eat healthily, and the and the healthier you get, and the more you realise it makes you feel happy and more energised, the more you'll you crave those foods. Whereas if you're sort of more reliant on sugar, um, you'll start to crave the sugar because you'll sort of get that it, a, a sugar is very addictive and b you, you'll get that kind of energy boost and you start to link that energy boost and feeling good with sugar that's why coffee is one of like really addictive as well I know I love coffee <laughs> but you're craving yeah you're what you're craving is amazing so that your whole your whole homeostasis of your body is in a really good space so that's fantastic to hear I'm very yeah really exciting because it's quite rare because most people go on craving sweets and chocolate. yeah so i don't really crave sweets <laughs> and, and i know if i'm craving the sweets that there's something out of balance so janine uh, sorry lorraine is also saying she craves spinach and beetroot yeah beetroot's my other one i forgot to add that beetroot like oh i could eat that every day yeah, I love beetroot. This is amazing. I wish everybody craved this. We're always so happy. <laughs> but, but I didn't used to be like this. I used to be sort of like the ham, the cheese sandwich. Um, but then I would feel a slump in the afternoons. Mm -hmm. So um, there's two other areas that we wanted to talk about. Um, and one of them is around can food really affect your mental health? And the other is can food really affect your immune system? So it's up to you, Janine, which... Um, which you want to go with first based on where we are kind of conversationally at right now <laughs> definitely yes on both um we'll do quite a bit on the immune because i think it's quite prevalent at the moment and there's, there's obviously there's the virus that's kicking around and there's this sort of just we're still a little bit in cold and flu season i think with the virus around so the immune system we'll, we'll cover a bit more on but um with like i wanted to just like show you something you can put with your coffee so some something that can impact your mental health and just your um 
your mental focus is to add because if you love coffee which I do and I'm sure lots of people watching this do yeah me too <laughs> oh add a bit of this to it this is called theanine l-theanine um and this is great with caffeine it becomes a nootropic and that boosts your uh, mental acuity you can focus it's great to take before if say if you're doing an exam or you're doing some sort of mental activity like you were I don't know focusing on building your business and writing your book or, or something like that um it takes about 30 40 minutes for it to kick in but it'll last for about eight to ten hours and so say this again what is this the l-theanine l-theanine you can see that um yeah oh, eight L. L. <laughs> I thought it was e-l oh yeah or you can just just google theanine and it'll come up um I'll maybe give you a little list of the things yeah. I, people want to want to know and um, tea has it in it naturally but coffee oh, okay. doesn't Mm. So a lot of people get anxiety because coffee can cause anxiety, which obviously impacts your mental health in a negative way, even though it boosts your, you know, your, your focus. But um, it doesn't have the theanine in it. So you get the anxiety that you wouldn't get if you were drinking tea. And mm. if the highest sources of, of this in tea is with green tea. So obviously everybody knows green tea is one of the best teas you can drink. Um, or if you didn't, you do now. <laughs> Because I also in the afternoon crave a cup of tea, but then yeah. periodically will crave green tea. So this like, please don't assume that any of us know that this is like yeah. to confirm that these cravings are real and mean something. Well, the body knows. And the more you get into your health and eating healthier and cleaner, the more you your body tells you. And everyone's like, what does that mean when your body tells you? It, it means it's what you're craving. So if you're craving healthy foods, that's your body telling you that's what it needs more of because that's what's working for it. If you're craving sweet and, and unhealthy, fatty, you know, foods, maybe more carbs, but that's that's your body giving you feedback that you're either ill, stressed, tired, premenstrual. <laughs> You know, anyway, you know, I, I like yourself, like once a month I crave a lot of sugar, but it's just around that special time for the ladies. Um, and I just know that's my body giving me feedback that I'm tired and I'm craving that. So I need to boost all the other foods you were talking about before, all the greens and the veggies and the fruits. But um, but this is great because this really impacts, literally impacts your mental health. And, and theanine helps with anxiety and a uh, feeling of calmness and you can use it to help with depression. And you can take it just on its own in the evening and it'll really aid your sleep and it'll help with depression and things like that. So it literally impacts your mental health, um, as do all new tropics. Um, so I'll pop that back over there. Uh, so that's just that's just like one example, really, of how it can impact your mental health. But basically, the happier you are, the better your mental health is. So the better food you eat, the happier you'll feel, and the more energy you, it's all it, it's also symbiotic, and then but it works either way around as well. Like if your your mental health will also impact, I think, what you want to eat and how you eat things, and your stress levels also impact how you're digesting the food. So you you could be eating the healthiest, cleanest food going, but if you're stressed, if you're not eating that food, a from a place of joy and happiness, which might sound a bit woo woo, but there's there's you know there's scientific proof and everything. If you want to look all this up on, on how stress, we all know now how stress impacts the body. Um, so if you're not eating from a place of joy when you're eating food, that can impact you in a negative way. And you're not digesting; it literally impacts your gut and your digestive system. So everything, literally, the whole body is connected. Anything that's in your body, your mind's in your body. So anything you put in there is going to impact the other. And it, it seems like common sense when you say it like that. And, and sometimes it's not so you hear that, you, that you'd make that correlation. You go, oh, actually, yeah, of course it would, because I'm putting something in. So, of course, it's going to impact everything inside there. So that's that. Um, so immune system, which is what I really want to talk about, um, because it's a big top topic at the minute. So a couple of things I want to say. Um, obviously, you need to be, boost your immune system. So some foods that you can do that. There's like a few different categories of food. Um, so, um, but we'll sort of mix them into such supplements. The biggest supplements, I'd say, vitamin C. Everybody knows vitamin C. Um, it will boost your immune system. It also fights a virus. Um, and it, how vitamin C works is it produces more. It gets your body to produce more white blood cells, and then as and it's the blood cells that, that the immune system sends to fight the virus. Also, with doing exercise as well, if you're doing a little bit of light exercise each day that makes your immune system push the white blood cells around your system faster than if you're just sitting there, it's, you know, sedentary and you're not moving. As long as you're not over-exercising, which can 
can have a negative effect on the immune system. But just moving each day and going for that walk every day will push the white blood cells around. So it'll help you fight for that virus better and getting out into the sunshine and doing that as well, which will increase your vitamin D, which you need more of. You need vitamin D3. Um, and also taking a supplement of that right now would be great. Um, um, you need between about 1,000 and 2,000 IUD a day, roughly. Um, but if you're taking about 1,000 a day, just, just with the, what's going on currently, that, that should be enough to keep your vitamin D3 levels um, at, at an effective level. Um, the only really way you'd know how much you need is if you did a test. Uh, some people might need more. But if there are, I'm assuming that, that yours are at a, or that, you know, if, if they're at a, a normal level, 1,000 a day at the moment will be fine. And taking a walk out in the sunshine as well, I'm just trying to get as much on your body. Um, you uh, selenium. So you need to get some selenium. Selenium is amazing for the immune system. Um, and the food ways you can get that, um, it, it, it comes in the ground. It's from minerals in the soil. So you can get it from um, mushrooms, spinach, spinach, Brazil nuts, <laughs> um, and, and on the sort of meat, meaty side, eggs, tuna, poultry, all have selenium in it. But if you're vegan, obviously do the spinach, the nuts, da, 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 that, that side. Um, and it's got antiviral properties and it, and it and it really helps at a cellular level and it boosts your immune system. And another thing is zinc. Um, you need to get zinc into your diet. I actually, when I was ill, I spoke to about three different doctors when I had COVID-19. And one of the things that I was advised to up was my zinc and as well as vitamin C. Um, so zinc has a massive impact on your immune system and you can get that from food sources as well. Oysters being a great one, but they might not be uh, readily available right now. Well, maybe they are, depending where you live. I don't know. <laughs> Anybody yeah. by the sea got any oysters? That, that, that's, a, that's a new COVID-19 business idea. <laughs> I mean, I could keep talking about all this uh, stuff so, today. OK, let me, um, let me ask you then some questions related to some other odd things I do, and I don't know if it's good. So every day I put half a lemon juice yeah. into a pint of water, and I drink that. That's my first pint of the day. And I kind of drink that with my coffee. Somewhere in my head, I'm thinking that that's neutralizing. Yeah. Am yeah. I getting vitamin C from that lemon? You will get 100% getting vitamin C. And that's a great way. It's also very cleansing, it's very energizing. And you're kind of, it is balancing in a way because lemon's actually very alkalizing for the body. Um, even though it's a, 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 an acidic fruit, once it hits your stomach, it's actually alkalizing, which is very cleansing for your body. And you need that to balance out um, acid and toxicity in, in your body and your life. And coffee is very acidic. So in a way, it's kind of balancing it out. <laughs> and I notice if I don't have the lemon water, I do notice that, that, that the caffeine is kind of, I almost feel like my head's starting to bubble. It's really weird. Um, what else do I do? Um, Coffee's awesome. Obviously, I, I've said I like that that cup of tea in the afternoon, so that's probably because I want to get my lycopene. No. Theanine, theanine. My theanine. <laughs> you need to write all of this down. Oh, tomatoes is why you want the lycopene. That's why you eat the tomatoes. <laughs> okay, that's, yeah, the tomatoes. Um, okay, there was some other things, that, as you were saying, um, I also crave rye bread. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's better than rather, I guess in rather a way. than rather than normal bread, and I quite like rye bread with um, uh, sardines on it. Nice. Very nice. Also, you got all your amigas in there as well, um, and your sardines and the fish, which is a scent. One of these. Uh, if I was going to give you a little snapshot of essential vitamins to take that everybody should sort of take, it would be. Um, zinc and vitamin c obviously and d3 um some kind of fish oils or some kind of oil that has the omega-369 in it fish oils is the best way to get it eating oily fish like sardines salmon etc but if you're vegan you might not you won't want to take that so you could take something like i've got a whole plethora of vitamins here just to pull them <laughs> but this is good for if you're vegan this is a beauty oil which has got all three um, Amiga's in. It, it's, it's comprised of flax, hemp, avocado, evening primrose, and pumpkin seed. So, and it's got uh, three, six, and nine in that. So, if you vegan, take something like that. Um, but if you're not, take fish oils. And um, I'd say take magnesium, which is also going to help relax your body and help you sleep. Women are sp specific, um, more particularly um, 
deficient in magnesium than men are, maybe because we don't, our bodies don't deal with stress as effectively as men's do, mm. um, and some B vitamins, um, which helps with stress as well, and especially if you stress, it will run down. So that's my in in the questions or uh, in the comments, people are saying we need a blog. <laughs> Andy Park is saying he can't type fast enough. Um, <laughs> we should say this, guys, because Janine and I spoke before we came on about writing a blog about this because I am absolutely fascinated by it and Janine is an expert on this she's a huge number of qualifications um and is also a qualified personal trainer as well so the whole kind of movement mindset mental health is really her area and it's so funny one of my mentors at the start of the year said that if we were going to invest in anything that it would be worth us investing in kind of like a, a health MOT to yeah. to find out where we're actually at because and Janine summed it up. If we imagine our bodies, it are you know the car we all aspire to. I don't, what what car do you want? A Bentley, a Ferrari, whatever. I mean, cars are kind of a bit useless at the moment. Um, but would you be putting a McDonald's into them? Would you be putting like crisps and dip into them, or would you be filling them full of? Uh, a fuel source that was really helpful for them and this is so I call my body the machine because I when I had my near-death experience and the machine kind of broke I was like oh I wasn't really looking after the machine that well was I um and this is when it's so important to understand this body this human meat case some people call it um Nice. <laughs> which isn't great but it needs to be looked that's why I call it the machine it needs to be looked after and what we're putting into it actually is having a, a benefit for us so just let's then touch upon this whole thing of um is what we're eating affecting our mental health because there's a whole heap of research about the gut brain connection what are your thoughts on that yeah definitely um serotonin is actually producing the gut a lot of people think there's a misconception that it's it's producing your brain because that actually especially when it comes to things like depression which you you know when you and when you get depression you end up with a depletion of serotonin which is why people take the antidepressants because they're trying to rebalance the chemical imbalance which is in the brain but it didn't start in the brain it starts in the gut um yeah and so serotonin is produced in the gut so a way you know, um, like we had a brief chat before, like there's a lot of people moving away from antidepressants and taking nootropics because they're trying to get that same chemical rebalancing. Um, but the great thing is, is if I, what you eat will literally impact your mental health because you can boost your serotonin levels and that obviously goes straight to your brain and that literally boosts your mental health. You're happier, you can, you know, cure yourself from depression with, there's obviously a and a combination of things but one of the things that you can do is choose what you eat produce more serotonin which then will go to the brain so you don't have the depletion um you know so let's prevent you getting to the point where you need the antidepressants exercise what you think about what you focus on are all of obviously other components of that as well um, but we're just talking about food specifically at the moment um and if you've got poor gut health um you're your whole body is just not going to work your whole health starts in the gut you have to take care of your gut and it's like a real balance like I love to drink coffee but I also know that coffee impacts there's something called a villi intestinal villi they're like little fingers in your intestine like that little moving about um and coffee um sort of makes them go down and makes them smaller so it stops your digestion so you have to balance that out um you know, if you do drink coffee, and if you were really, really ill, because I'd probably take your coffee for a while until your body heals. Uh, or if you had leaky gut, or you know, you can get like little holes in your gut, I'd probably take your coffee for a while, and I'd get you on something like uh, chicken stocks, and um, because that heals a hole in the guts as well. So I drink uh, a little cup of chicken stock every week, which is great for your gut. But it's also great for collagen, keeping you looking young and keeping your skin all bouncy, which is you know, as ladies we like, and the men, sure the men like that too. <laughs> little health and beauty advice as well um but yeah it, it all starts in your gut so literally what you're eating will impact your mental health literally just on that cell um, on the chemical level um and uh, you know it, and it is like the feel good 
feel good hormone literally and also moving and exercise gets your endorphins going and you're feeling good but that's all linked as well it's like you have to do it all it's like your mm. body literally. and um obviously like janine is not saying in any way shape or form if you need to take medication then take the medication it is like everything is a spectrum and um some of us might be feeling like we're in a certain part of the spectrum but understanding you can analyze every um every area of your life and that potentially taking out certain foods that you're eating and adding in other foods and then seeing so everything I do personally is based on how I feel and do I feel better do I feel worse from eating certain things and say for example if I eat too much chocolate I I, I don't necessarily feel better I have a limit it actually sends me to sleep if I have too much sugar it's really crazy so um I found giving up alcohol last year has really helped me uh, from the point of view of my mental health, but also from my system, my wellness, everything. So it is, it's so interesting. And as I said, we could have this conversation for such a long time. But Janine um, is going to write a blog for us with her top tips. Um, so where can we, where do you hang out on social media the most? Like where can we, where can we find out more about you? I'm on Facebook and Instagram, but Instagram's probably the best place for you to grab me. So it's just Ginny Newberry. All my social media is Ginny Newberry, so I'm easy to stalk. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so, um, connect with Janine as well. She's also on LinkedIn as Janine Newberry. So. I am. There's, there's no hiding. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Janine. And um, thank you for all of your comments, everybody who's been with us and for sharing what you're also eating. I'm loving seeing this tin sardines all the way. Um, yeah, big fan of those. Um, and until next time, I will see you tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Stay safe, stay well, and don't forget to keep washing your hands. Thanks for your time, Janine. Thank you. Oh, pleasure. Thank you. Bye.